What is going on, everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here, and today what we are going to do is recap the week number 11 matchup between the Jacksonville Jaguars and the Indianapolis Colts, and boy do I wish I had better news to report, and boy do I wish that game went better than it did. You remember the week two loss against Houston and how passionate I was about that game and how irritated I got during that game? Trust me, this game is just as worse, if not as, if not as worse. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, get ready to listen to Tree Brand a little bit. This is the Jacksonville Jaguars versus Indianapolis Colts, week number 11, recap. Now, in the title of the preview video, I talked about how that game was win or bust for the Jaguars playoffs. The Jaguars Twitter page tweeted out full speed ahead. Everybody was excited. Everybody was hyped to see what this Jaguar team will do with Nick Foles because the report all week was if anybody's going to give the Jags a chance at the playoffs, it's Nick Foles. Gardner Minshew couldn't beat the above 500 teams. Gardner Minshew would fumble. Nick Foles, though, he's accurate. He's great. We paid him $88 million. We didn't just pay him $88 million for no reason. But it turns out that the exact opposite of everything I just said is actually true. Nick Foles was a flop and a half, and we're going to get into the defense. Don't even worry about that. I already know y'all are in the comment section right now typing something out. Like, But Treeb, the run defense. The run defense was terrible. Trust me, we will get in to the run defense here in a little bit. But first, I want to talk about Nick Foles, and I want to talk about how hard he flopped. You look at his stats, and you think, oh, that's pretty good stats. Most of it came from garbage time. I don't want to hear that his stats were pretty good because most of that came in garbage time and it was straight appalling. Straight Blake Bortles-esque performance. Like he puts up good numbers like 300 yards passing or 290 yards passing, but he did not win us the game. We lost the game. We did you know, we scored one touchdown in garbage time, but we got beaten up and down that field like no other. And this Colts defense beat our offense up just as bad as the Jaguars defense got beat by these guys up front for Indianapolis. Like Nick Foles made straight terrible decisions. Like if you didn't watch a single game of football and you watch one game of Gardner Minshew and you watch one game of Nick Foles and I told you one of these guys is a six round rookie. You are going to guess that <laughs> and one guy we're paying 88 fucking million dollars to. You are going to guess that Nick Foles is that rookie. That's what you're going to guess. You're not going to guess Gardner Minshew is because Gardner doesn't throw it into double coverage. Gardner Minshew doesn't make straight idiotic stupid decisions to just try and make a play. Like, and these are like in double coverage uncatchable balls. Like, oh, okay, calm down a little bit, Tree. Find your happy place. Listen, people say... It was Nick Foles' first game back. Give him some time. This was the game. If that's your theory, if that is your theory, this is Foles' first game back. Give him some time. We should have never played his ass the rest of the season if that was your theory. If your theory was, oh, Foles is a little hurt. It's going to take him some time to come back. Look at what the record is. Look at how big this game is. In If you are hesitant at all that Nick Foles is not going to perform to the level that you want him to perform at, why even put him in there? Do not use that as an excuse. Do not. I don't want to hear that from fans. I don't want to hear that from the coaches. I don't want to hear nothing. I don't want to hear, let's bring Foles along. Let's see what he does. Let's see if he can take us to an 8-8 eight and eight season. I don't want to hear that. If that is your argument, we should have never started Nick Foles in the first place. I was going to judge Foles hard on this first game no matter what. I didn't care if he did great. I didn't care if he did bad. I didn't care if he was okay. If there was critiques to be made in his game, I, re I was going to make those critiques. And I was going to let that know. Nick Foles played garbage. Nick Foles played trash. This decision to play Nick Foles was idiotic in retrospect now, looking back. I was a big proponent of, yeah, let's see what Minshew, I mean, not Minshew, let's see what Foles can do, and maybe, you know, he is that guy. Maybe he will take us to the playoffs. He has this track record, you know what I mean? And you put him in, in a situation where Big Dick Nick, his nickname, is where he thrives. He thrives in must-win situations. He thrives under pressure. This is the exact moment when you want Nick Foles. No, no. He did not rise to the occasion at all. He did not put up good enough stats for me to say it was worth putting him in there. 
from the jump. If you knew what Min, if you knew how Foles was, and if he was practicing this bad, and if he was making these dumb decisions like during the week in practice, you should have never ever put him back in in the first place. You should have rode and died with Gardner Minshew, because I don't care. I don't care. I know there's going to be people saying, Treep, this was his first game back. Give him some time. I would get that if we had like a winning record. We were already in the playoff race or, you know, we were sitting fine or if we were already done. Like if we were already garbage, like week 11, if we were already like 0-9, you know, coming off the bye or like we only have two wins, three wins. Not when we're in the thick of things in a playoff race to make it to the playoffs. And this is basically a must-win game to keep your season alive. I don't even, I talked about it, man. I'm, I'm getting exposed right now for all of my bad takes because I said in one of my videos, I don't like the argument of rolling with the hot hand. I said that, but God damn, like looking back at it, we should have rolled with the hot hand. We should have rolled with Nick Fol I mean with Gardner Minshew. I keep messing these guys up. We should have ran with Gardner Minshew because if he was just waiting to come back and he was going to play like that and take check downs and play it safe, and when he does take shots, like, have him be that bad and, like, that outrageously bad that he looks like the sixth-round rookie and he looks like he's never been in there, we should have never played him in the first place. No. No. We should have never played him in the first place. He had a bad game. I don't care. The coaching, just as bad. The offensive play calling, just as bad. I don't know if John Day Lupo wanted to come into this game and out-duel Frank Wright with Nick Foles as his quarterback, he's like, oh, I'm going to get my friend right now and I'm going to outduel him. Well, freaking Nick Foles in his first game back, we're going to have him throw the ball 50 times. It doesn't all necessarily come down to Nick Foles. The play on the field does come down to Nick Foles. But the play calling on the offensive side of the ball was just as atrocious. And it was just as bad, dude. Quarterback play gets an F. Okay, I don't care. Play calling gets an F too. I don't care. They played terrible. Played so, so bad. And I totally even forgot, like, when I was midway into this rant, that I'm giving out grades. You know what I mean? So this is like, quarterbacks right off the bat, freaking Nick Foles gets an F from me. Because if that's what we were hyped for, if that's why you made the hype video, we should have never, ever, ever even started Nick Foles in the first place. And I don't even think I could give the running backs a fucking grade. Because the play calling was so bad, and Leonard Fournette had eight total carries. The whole game. Your bell cow running back. The guy that you say every single week is the offense. This is who we this is what our offense runs through is Leonard Fournette. And you give the guy in a must-win situation eight carries, and you decide to give him the ball when we are already down two, three possessions, and he's getting two, three yards, is because you didn't give it to him in the early stages. You're like, oh that one drive though. That one drive, though, Foles went off. Let's just have Foles keep throwing the ball. No, stop it. Quit. No. Leonard Fournette didn't even do enough for me to grade him. And he was short with the media. He, you know, said it, asked the coaches that question. That was something he said. And I am just as frustrated as Leonard Fournette about the play calling and about this football team. Because I literally, I dedicate a big part of my life to this football team. And it has not paid off in the slightest bit since I've been around, since I've been a fan. So can I blame Jalen Ramsey for wanting to go? Can I blame Leonard Fournette for wanting to go? Hell no. Hell no. Go get yours. Go be a star somewhere else. Because we won't we won't treat you like it, and we won't use you to your full potential. So I'm not even going to grade the running backs. Raquel Armstead did get like an extensive amount of reps for what he usually gets. So I'm not even going to grade them, because there's not enough to grade. The wide receivers, they did pretty good. You know, when Foles threw them a ball in their vicinity, there wasn't a lot of drops. DJ Chark was one of the guys that really stood out in this game, whether that be the garbage time touchdown, the first drive touchdown. This guy is a real wide receiver number one. He's really, really clutch when you need him to be, and he's an all-around great player, and from last week was the best player of our offense. But unfortunately, that offense had 10 scoreless drives out of 12 or something like that. And Lambeau missed a field goal, too. That's how you knew shit was going to go south. When Lambeau missed that field goal, you knew everything was going to be done and over with. But DJ Chark really did well. Chris Conley had a decent game as well. Uh, D.D. Westbrook, man, he got lit up one time, dropped the ball. Uh, the wide receivers as a whole, I'm going to be giving them a B, and that's definitely 
the highest grade that anybody on this offense is going to get. The offensive player of the week is obviously going to be DJ Chark. I think Chark deserves it. I think, you know, he definitely deserves it more than anybody else on this offense. And his offensive overall grade is going to get a D. This is a terrible output with a terrible situation that you had to at least know a little bit that Nick Foles was going to struggle like this. You had to know in the slightest bit that maybe Nick Foles isn't ready to come back. You had to have some sort of assumption that that was how things were going to be and that's just how it was going to go down. Like you had to have some sort of a some sort of assumption. You know what I mean? So this D, this offense gets a D. This defense. This fucking defense. I want to start off positively with the secondary who I think since Jalen Ramsey's been gone has played really well. Jacoby Brissett only only threw 140 yards. You know, Trey Herndon on that got a pass interference call, and then, you know, he allowed that. Or no, that was AJ on the coverage on uh, Ebron for that touchdown pass. But, you know, the defensive line should have brought him down. It should have brought Jacoby Brissett down for a sack in the backfield, and it should have been a wrap, and that should have been just game over done with. But, uh, you know, the secondary's performing well. Jared Wilson got his first turnover of the season. Um, I really like these young guys that we're trying to bring along and develop, and I think we have a good secondary coach that uh, is doing a good job with that. Uh, Trey Herndon's developing well. Jared Wilson's developing well. Ronnie Harrison, man, can't say enough about him. Uh, I think he's a Pro Bowl caliber player. If you listen to the latest Jaguar Maven podcast, episode two, where we talked about players that we'd put in the Pro Bowl, I definitely would make a case to start Ronnie Harrison. I think he's one of those guys that uh, definitely deserves to be in the Pro Bowl. So the secondary, I'm going to be giving them a B. I think they played well. I think they did their job. Now the defensive line, man. They got sacks. Josh Allen tied the rookie record for the uh, most sacks by a rookie. He got eight. And Yannick Ngakwe moved up to second all-time in sacks. And he has, uh, what was it, 50 less games than the all-time leader? Like, it's just crazy that we signed Miles Jack who looks so lost out there, and we'll dive into the linebackers, linebackers in a second, but Yannick Ngakwe and Josh Allen, that is a fearsome pass-rushing duo that you can have for years, and you better go out of your way to work hard to extend Yannick Ngakwe, if nothing else, because I've seen this on Twitter today, and I would have to agree with it. I'm usually not a player's guy when it comes to the sport of football. You know, I love my Jacksonville Jaguars. I'm going to support them. I'm going to be a ride or die. Did it hurt when some players left? Yeah, it hurt a little bit. But, you know, I never questioned my fandom for this team. But if we let Yannick and Gawkwe leave, that might be pushing it a little bit. Because this guy's pure talent, pure talent, has great potential and should be on this franchise for a long, long time. Should be a cornerstone. Should be here for the rest of his career. Now, something that me and Fitz were talking about with this defensive line is, you know, they always say in the draft or they always say just, you know, on TV, there's, you can never have too many pass rushers. I beg to fucking differ you can never have too many pass rushers because these guys are so upfield every single run play. It's not even necessarily like every play these guys are like getting pushed out of the play and they're getting to the second level. These guys are so far up the damn field, they're taking themselves out of the play. Whether that be Taven Bryan, who I've seen a, a little bit of that from Taven. He's all the way up the field. Yannick Ngakwe, Josh Allen, Calais Campbell, too, is playing a little soft, like not keeping your lane integrity. Like, it was just terrible. It's like they did this on purpose. Like, they did this to themselves. Like, they're not you know, making and, like, plugging up the holes, nothing. They're up the field. Like, being a pass rusher on first and 10 when they've already ran 150 yards on y'all. And y'all are already up the field. Like, are these guys, like, I get it. They're talented. Like, they're great pass rushers. All Like, most of this whole defensive line, great pass rushers. But, like, do they not even consider the run ever? Are they just like, they're going to pass the whole game, pass rush, pass rush, pass rush. You're all the way up the field. This is what the whole offensive line wants. They don't even need to block you because you're out of the play. You're completely out of the play. You don't even matter. You're gone. You're in the backfield. The run's already by you. All they need to do is block these linebackers, and these linebackers, they didn't perform. Defensive line, they did well in the pass rushing game, but we have too many pass rushers that just do not remain in their lane. They don't have any lane integrity. Terrible. Terrible against the run. Awful. 200 yards to Jonathan fucking, like, Williams and Marlon Mack. Who the hell is Jonathan Williams? I've never even heard of him. And he had 119 yards against us. So a C on the day for the defensive line, and that's generous. Let's talk about the linebackers. 
It's partially the defensive line's fault because they don't even need to get blocked because they're so out of the play, it doesn't even matter. But y'all get manned up, or y'all get off the man, but you can't make a fucking tackle to save your life. Like, you tackle them for, like, three extra yards when you do make a tackle. Like, it's, oh my god, it's appalling, bro. Straight appalling. Watching these linebackers play, it's like watching a junior college play. Like, it's terrible. All of them. Miles Jack, man, he's not a middle linebacker. He's just not. He's a will linebacker. Najee Good's not good. Leon Jacobs played bad. Like, all these linebackers that came in played bad. They did. That's just a matter of fact. They cannot tackle. They're bodied up. You know, it's just terrible. Like, I don't know what else you want me to say. Like, I, I'm just ripping into this team. It's awful. It's, it's bad, man. We need Todd Wash out the door yesterday. Like, it's annoying. It's appalling. This team's bad. We're giving the linebackers an F. Now, the defensive player of the week, I'm going to give that to Josh Allen. I think he deserves it. You know, tying the rookie sack record and all that. Um, and they did say in the press conference that they want to use him more. He only played in 51% of the snaps last week. And that's like, he's getting eight sacks, he's playing that much. And they want to see more of him. So, you know, he's going to break the rookie sack record eventually. And, you know, it's going to be good for Mr. Josh Allen. But thank you guys for listening to me rant. I hope I kind of spoke for the people during that rant. And thank you for watching. And that was my Jacksonville Jaguars versus Indianapolis Colts recap. What did you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget, check the links down below as well. You can like me on Facebook, at Troop Talks. Follow me on Twitter, at Troop Talks. Follow me on Instagram, at Trey Vaughn Pixley. Also, if you haven't yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon so you get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new content on this channel four days a week. Ain't no way I work with me. Them are just straight facts. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, you guys have a great rest of your day.